It's Tech Tuesday. I was planning on broadcasting from the Arctic Tundra that was my unplowed street, but we didn't have a long enough extension cord to reach the school. Number five, Comcast is no more. Sorry, no more TV. Okay, just kidding. Comcast is becoming, get this, Xfinity. Infinity is forever. X makes it awesome. Foreverly awesome. Also, the forever is the time you will wait to get service truck to come to your house to fix your simple issues. Comcast is giving this name switcheroo a shot because they are trying to ditch the bad reputation that Comcast has for mediocre service, poor speed, and a less than satisfactory customer service. They are also possibly merging with NBC later this year and are trying to keep the thought that the service provider will now also be the same people who make the shows, meaning that the fear of NBC shows will get preference over everything else because of the monopoly type ownership out of people's heads. Basically, they are aiming for customers to go, no, Comcast didn't merge with NBC. It was this random company, Xfinity. Let's hope that some well-informed Tech Tuesday viewers will then interject with, but Xfinity is Comcast with a different name. By the way, after some discussion with upper management, Tech Tuesday will now be known as Techfinity Awesome X Day. Number four, the astronauts up in the International Space Station have finally tapped into the system of tubes. The internet, for those of you who have no idea what the system of tubes is, but internet is so 2004. Now these highly educated scientists and technicians did exactly what you expect them to do when they have the internet to their disposal. They started tweeting. There have actually been some pretty amazing shots that got tweeted back to Earth from these newly connected spacemen. But I know you are wondering, how did NASA pull it off? Well, using what I could only assume is called the space computer, the astronauts are able to remotely connect to computers back on Earth, which is then connected to the interwebs. It only works when the station is connected to NASA centers with the high-speed data connection thing. But when it is, it offers all the comforts of home, Skype, email, YouTube, and Facebook. So long as we don't put this technology in Russian satellites housing nuclear missiles, Clint Eastwood does not have another trip to space in him. Space cowboys, anyone? Come on, it wasn't that bad of a movie. Number three. The iPhone and iPod Touch are the new hotspots for developers. Some recent surveying of game developers showed that 19% of them write games for the iPod, while the DS and PSP have less than half of that. On top of that, the popularity of mobile gaming has gone up 12% to take over one-fourth of the gaming market since the introduction of the original iPhone. Now, the App Store is littered with junk. Impulse buy games that cost nearly nothing and provide little entertainment. So it's hard to group in the iPod Touch into the same section as the DS and PSP. However, there are plenty of junk games on the DS and PSP that provide little entertainment that cost $30. Maybe this change in popularity is showing a change in what mobile gaming will be. Yes, there's always room for multiple platforms and high-end expensive games, but what is the harm in buying one-time play games when it only costs a dollar? I have an idea. Knock all the Wii games down to one dollar, then I'll start buying some. Number two. So the first real gadget of the countdown is a hard drive, but it's not just any hard drive, a USB 3.0 hard drive from Seagate. Still not excited? Well, USB 3 is the newest connection thing that will make what you have now sad and slow. If you bought a computer between now and the 90s, you have a USB 1 or 2 port on it. USB 3 is rated for 10 times the speed of USB 2, so fast that it slows down only because your computer can't think fast enough as it is transferring. Now, why would you buy a drive that is USB 3 when you don't have a USB 3 port? Well, Seagate thought of that. The drive comes with a kit that lets you use an express card slot for the faster speeds and a USB port for the power. It is also backwards compatible to just USB 2 and future-proof to plug into USB 3 when it eventually comes out. For those of you who already own three external hard drives and can't find a good reason to get another, I just found a perfect excuse. Number one. Will Microsoft release a Zune phone this month? Most likely. Will they be too late to the party like they were with the Zune HD? Also just as likely. Microsoft plans to show off their newest in-house creation at a big mobile expo thing at the end of February. It's not necessarily going to be a Zune HD with a phone in it, but a phone using a combo of Windows Mobile 7 and the Zune software. As of now, there is upwards of three different phones rumored to be releasing that run this software combo. Now, the Zune is an in-house built device and not outsourced to HTC or Motorola like Google has done. And it's likely that Microsoft will do the same for at least one of its phones. The rest could be anything, either phones already out and run the software or new phones built by someone else. So it seems more likely that Microsoft is trying to save Windows Mobile by making the software, the next Android, a more fun and stylish and usable on multiple different devices. Then again, it could just be that awkward friend that shows up to a party two hours late and never really gets any further into the house in the living room. That's all for this week. Check out the Tech Tuesday Facebook page to see the latest episodes and blogs. As long as the world does not come to another grinding halt from two feet of snow, I'll see you next week.